Well, so much has happened over the course of a week. And if you look at Vodacom Super Rugby, the South Sea Sharks certainly have reason to smile. They return from the Australasian tour with three wins from four, top the overall standings. Not bad going either by the Vodacom Bulls and the DHL Stormers, both winning their respective home matches. So we'll reflect on the South African teams in action this weekend. We'll also touch on the Springboks as well. They'll be in action and at just over a week's time against the World 15. So plenty to talk about. Besides just that, a lot of news doing the rounds in the rugby world. And uh, the Japanese will be represented at the Rugby World Cup next year. That's after they won the Asian Five Nations. And that's qualify thrashing Hong Kong 49-8 in Tokyo. And that was last Sunday. Well, James Horwell, the Red Skipper, has been fined 1,800 Australian dollars for blaming his team's defeat to the Melbourne Rebels earlier this month on a stupid, I quote, refereeing decision. So uh, he's certainly uh, a little bit lighter in the wallet, I suppose, after that. We heard this news immediately after Saturday's um, action in Super Rugby. Jean de Villiers will be, is out of the Bok training camp where he didn't go to Durban. And uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be at least eight weeks. At least that's what it seems uh, the prognosis is. And he might just uh, be back for the rugby championship. Adrian Strauss, he's also not amongst the Springboks, and that's because of uh, the ban that his copped uh, for a tip tackle. Um, the Cheetahs captain, he uh, tackled DHL Stormers wing Gubas van Veek last weekend, and three weeks out means he's not going to be taking part uh, in that World 15 match. So, so much to talk about. I'm not going to do it alone. I've got a bunch of guests uh, joining Mozidi C and I. Well, only two, actually. It's not a bunch. It's Dumani <laughs> Bobo and John Mitchell. Bob, it's good to see you. It's been a while since you were in the booth studio. Um, just overall, if you look at the picture, the Sharks, they're smiling. They were smiling last weekend. Is there a danger that with the internationals coming up, coming back home after a great tour, that they could um, perhaps just you know, go a little off the boil? Yeah, you should. I mean, they should be proud of what they did and their effort and know how they went about it over overseas tour. I thought uh, four out of three is good returns. Not too many teams do that. But yeah, when you come back home, it just changes the whole environment. Now, all of a sudden, you have to organize tickets. You have to think about the water pipe that burst down in the sink and, and all of that. So hopefully <laughs> that doesn't take them off the game because it's much easier. Everything is pretty much organized. You go have coffee with your mates. You talk over the tour. But then when he comes back to home, this is when they need to start focusing because they do have an, a massive opportunity mm. to make sure that they get themselves a home semi-final. You know, to any uh, rugby wives or wags watching, it doesn't mean the guys don't enjoy being home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, I, I asked Bobs about, about that because this is the time of, of year in the tournament, at least in terms of uh, the group stages where teams can really spoil um, the run into to the playoffs. I, I think of the likes of the DHL Stormers, who's now starting to find form. They'll be playing a few South African teams along the way and could just upset the apple cart. Yeah, I think we had a superb weekend of rugby uh, just gone. And, and the thing is that, uh, you know, we've still got nine teams that are, are capable of, uh, you know, being in the top top six. And then you look at the Chiefs and the, and the Brumbies, you know, how they were in the top three for such a long period of time. Bang, down to seventh and, mm -hmm. and eighth in the, in the competition. And now you see the Waratahs and the Crusaders, who are two exceptional attacking teams, starting to join the Sharks, who are very much a field position, you know, hugely uh, uh, huge in defence and obviously manage the yellow card very well as well, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've had a few in the last two weeks, and they seem to cope very well uh, in that situation. You know, had a great tour and uh, you know everyone's getting just a little bit closer to the horizon yeah. uh, you know, and uh, they'll be excited by the, uh, one getting a break but two also uh, the co competition getting closer to finals time. There was a point uh, in the game uh, in Albany which had a little bit of controversy. Tavita Lee managed uh, to score a try, I think it was in the 67th minute, receiving a pass from Ma Nonu. And uh, this caused a lot of uh, chatter on Twitter uh, and the likes. Ultimately, I suppose it didn't make a difference to the Sharks' results, Mitch. Uh, but when you look at it, the debate was raging on. Well, we've seen a number of these in this competition. And, and where's the common sense gone in our game? You know, you know ball was forward. Um, and however, there, you see a lot of vision that comes from the actual passer, but really a lot of the vision for the referee should go to, the, to where the receiver receives the, the, ball. the ball. And I mean, to say that the, you know, are the fingers forward or are the fingers back, you know, the ball's either forward or not, you know, like in, <laughs> in, in, in my view. And it's a, I think it's an ugly feature in the, in the game. I, I think we just need to bring back common sense in this area.